The British Army needs in its ranks craftsmen of nearly every trade known to man. Skilled men, men who are resourceful and adaptable. For often they must work against time, perhaps under fire, sometimes without proper tools and materials. The army depends on these skilled craftsmen, the men who in devastated or remote areas provide the services an efficient army must have. The men who keep the machines of modern war in fighting trim. Above all, the army relies on the men who lead its craftsmen. The technical officers, warrant officers and NCOs who are themselves skilled craftsmen and leaders as well. How can the army ensure a steady supply of such men? It's done like this. Here they are, the future craftsmen and potential leaders of the army's technical corps. Boys of 15 upwards, starting their career at one of the army apprentices' schools. Army Apprentices School. These three words on his shoulder are a good description of the life a boy leads here. By the left, six back. First, it's an army apprentices school. The boys are called apprentice tradesmen. But they're obviously soldiers too, and good ones. Proud of their uniform and themselves. Being soldiers, their life is governed by the bugle, dividing the day into on parade and off parade, marking the time for work and play, for sleeping and eating. Messing is on normal army lines, but with this difference. They're growing boys. They get an extra large ration. They need it too, for in the course of a day they use up plenty of energy. physical training to develop growing bodies, there's a full range of games and athletics with good coaching to develop a boy's talents. In his barrack room, the apprentice tradesman learns how to look after himself. And here, like other soldiers, he learns the art of living in a close community. He gets paid for his labours on a rising scale according to his age and length of service. Board, lodging and clothing are all found and he gets a ration allowance when he goes home on leave.
So these are army schools. But now it's time to take a closer look at that second word, apprentices. It describes the largest part of a boy's life at these schools, for over half his working hours are spent in acquiring skill at his trade. Apprentice is the right word. It's a real apprenticeship that a boy serves in these workshops. Whatever his trade, a boy gets a thorough grounding in it, with theory and practice running side by side. Because he is not engaged on production work, every boy covers the whole range of his trade. Unlike the civilian apprentice, who may spend all his time on the particular line in which his firm specializes. As soon as he has acquired some skill, the apprentice begins to make things that exercise that skill. As his skill grows, so the tasks he is set get harder, until he's covered the whole range of the craft he's learning. And not only its military application. The object of these schools is to turn out an all-round craftsman, so that an apprentice who has served his time here is fit to follow his trade in civil life as well as in the army, a fact which is recognized by the trade unions. Indeed, boys are encouraged to work for a city and guild certificate to set alongside their army trade qualification. In one sense, the army tradesman has to be an even finer craftsman than his opposite number in civilian life, because of the difficult conditions under which he may have to work. An army fitter, for instance, has to be trained to make his own spare parts for first aid repairs in the field. So he spends a long time learning to use his hand tools to the best advantage. With chisel, saw and file, he learns to shape metal to amazingly fine limits. Apprentices, of course, learn to use the machines appropriate to their trade. But the army uses machine tools wherever possible. But in an emergency, machines may not be available. And then the things that count are the skill in a man's hands and his initiative and adaptability. So apprentice fitters are taught to make the tools of their trade. And if they are well enough made, they are allowed to keep them. Boys are allotted trades according to their own choice and aptitude. But the army's needs must count too. For example, the army needs plenty of these vehicle mechanics, far more than it needs, say, plumbers. Still, the range of trades is very wide, and it's always possible to fit a boy into a trade for which he's suited. There's the whole range of building trades, bricklayers, masons, painters, electricians, carpenters. There are other basic manual trades, such as welders, sheet metal workers, and blacksmiths. Boys in many other trades are given a working knowledge of these basic trades. For the boy who can work on a smaller scale and finer limits, there are trades like the armourers. The armourer is responsible for the maintenance and repair of arms. This apprentice is learning how to repair and test rifles. His work is carefully inspected and checked by his instructor. Later, on the range, 
the apprentice learns how to check the accuracy of the rifles he has repaired. When he passes out from the school, this boy may go to a unit as a regimental armourer. There are armourers with every fighting unit in the army, and their specialised skill is highly prized. For it is the armourer who keeps the army on the target. The instrument mechanic is very much a jack of all trades, but he has to be master of them too. On the mechanical side, his work is much the same as a fitter's, though on a smaller scale. In addition to the mechanical side of his work, the instrument mechanic has to be an expert in the electrical and optical side. The army has a wide range of optical instruments and the apprentice instrument mechanic has to understand them all and learn how to check and adjust them. This apprentice is learning how to correct a pair of binoculars. When the two crosses projected on the small black screen coincide, the binoculars are correctly adjusted. For the boy with a good head for figures, there are the more theoretical trades, like survey, which is concerned with the preparation of the army's maps. And the draftsman's trades, both mechanical and architectural. Lastly, there are the electrical trades. There's the Royal Engineer Electrician who deals with permanent lighting and power supply. And the Electrician Vehicle and Plant who, as his name implies, looks after the electrical side of army equipment, especially vehicles. Related to the electrical trades are the signals and telecommunications trades. These boys are learning the Morse code as a first step to becoming signals operators. Here, under field conditions, more advanced apprentices are practicing communications over a 53 wireless set. Four, one, two, a volt. Figures 7, 5, ampere hour capacity, break. Date, time of origin, figures 0, 2, 1, 4, 4, 5, able. Over. Hello, King Baker Mike. Roger, out. King Baker Mike, priority formal message for you. Over. Included in the signals trades are the signals mechanics. Apprentices to this trade must learn, among other things, to operate and maintain teleprinters, intricate machines which transmit type over hundreds of miles. They need careful adjustment if messages are to be sent and received correctly. For the wireless enthusiast, uh, there are the trades of radio mechanic and telecommunications mechanic. Both work on wireless, but the telecommunications mechanic works also on radar equipment. And this is perhaps the trade that requires most theoretical knowledge, yet these apprentices 
are taught in essentially the same way as apprentices to older and simpler trades like the carpenter. As in every trade, theory and practice are taught side by side. At each stage, a boy's initiative and adaptability are being steadily developed. Every boy in this trade makes his own wireless set and wherever possible, he makes the parts for himself. 